So it's the 22nd of May and I thought I'd do a quick harvest video today. It's a gorgeous day in between two stormy days. So we've had lots of rain and we've still got some to come. And then next week it really starts to improve. It's quite a complex time on the plot, just managing the transition from the spring harvests to the summer crops. And then it'll be quite a while before we um, start harvesting the summer crops. So we will have a little bit of a dip in our harvest volumes. Generally speaking, we have our biggest harvest about now, actually. Um, and then, as I say, you know, I think we probably harvest something like, say, £250 uh, in monetary value this week. And then we'll drop down probably to about £200. And it won't probably get up to sort of £250 mark again until um, probably August time, something like that. So uh, quite, quite, a big, quite a big dip, actually, quite a long dip. Anyway, let's get on with the harvest. So I'm going to start harvesting the polytunnel. Obviously, I've got lots of strawberries, uh, but I'll mostly eat those as I'm harvesting. Um, mainly, I'm going to be harvesting this calabrese, which is looking really nice. But I'm also going to harvest some of these calabrese leaves. Now, if you've never eaten calabrese leaves before, they're really gorgeous, and they're particularly nice in when they're grown under cover. Outside, they can get a bit tough, but you know, just look at the size of them and they're just so beautifully tender and flexible and almost spinach-like in terms of the texture, you know, when you, when you steam them. So you have to be really light on uh, the time that you steam them for. But yeah, they're gonna be lovely. And I need to get this bed, bed harvested because in here are going uh, the tomatoes. So I think I've already harvested about 20 of these Calabrese heads so far and a bit tricky actually to get to and snap them off so there's some of the calories heads and some of the leaves as well and that is a lovely harvest there's some really lovely heads there really good sizes and i've left two or three in the polytunnel for next week but uh, that's cleared a lot of space as i said that's going to be tomatoes next week and this bed actually was previously um, lettuce and uh, spring onions. So this is the second crop this year. So next up, I'm going to take out these turnips from the polytunnel as well. And these are the third succession this year. Uh, first and second successions came out of low tunnels and coal frames. And these are actually interplanted with leeks. So I want to get these out soon so I can let these leeks grow on. And they're a decent size actually. And you leave them much longer than this and uh, they're just going to go to seed so i'm going to get those picked so now i'm on to the first early onions again these are in the polytunnel and you'll hear me mention this again and again and again basically i always think in terms of first early second early is main crop and late crop um but uh, yeah these are tough ball growing from seed these are ready now lovely size for uh, an early onion and I've got three um, this week and next week supply here uh, and so in three weeks time we'll start harvesting the uh, second earlies from outside and then the early main crops uh, and then the main crop in August. So we've run out of onions in store now so it's really nice to uh, have these new um, first earlies ready effectively actually we, I think we were without onions decent sized bulbing onions for about two weeks uh, so we just had big spring onions instead um, but it was worth the wait so these are the second early onions as you can see they're just a just a few weeks behind the ones in the polytunnel uh, but they're still growing well good size on them now I interplant my onions with garlic to be harvested green and uh, yeah, it's really nice to be picking these out. There's a carrot there that's gone to seed for some reason. But there's quite a few of these. And we've got loads more green garlic back at home. But I'll just get this bed cleared so I can get it replanted. So now onto the courgettes. I'm picking them really small. It doesn't really... Uh, you know, you don't get a great harvest off them at this time of year, but uh, 
you just keep on picking them they just keep on coming they just keep getting bigger and bigger um, we're harvesting them probably two maybe three um, of these little tiny courgettes every week off each plant and we've got three plants so six to nine little courgettes a week it's not too bad there we go that's today's little tiny harvest and then the last thing uh, of the polytunnel i think is going to just be the carrot carrots these were sown in november and uh, i think we're going to pick most of these today we've got quite a lot of carrots now so i don't need to worry about uh, over picking the beds the pots rather you know at this time of year you don't expect big carrots it's just about early carrots that's all that matters and uh, you know they taste absolutely beautiful anyway so it doesn't really matter how big they are so if it's your first time growing early carrots your inclination might be to just leave them to let them grow bigger but that would be generally a mistake because they will run to seed before they get much bigger than this so uh, really carrots at this time of year is just lots of small carrots and just pick as many as you can eat I've got my, plenty more succession to carrots to go at so now I'm on to the potatoes we just do our first earlies in uh, in tubs these are Aaron Pilot and uh, yeah nothing special at this point we started harvesting our first earlies yeah, basically about the first week in April something like that and that's uh, quite a respectable yield from one container and two tubers there's a few turnips in there as well and again not a bad little harvest of turnips lots of small ones but that doesn't matter they taste fine and uh, as I said the bigger ones you know this time of year risk is that they'll go to seed if you let them grow much bigger so uh, best to just pick them and eat them so all this rain is kind of playing havoc really with the uh, asparagus harvest the plants are just growing so big so fast but uh, well again all you can do is your best just keep on picking some of these might be a fraction too tough but uh, Debbie will sort that out when she does the clean and pack now I'm on to the purple sprouting broccoli and the quality is fairly poor now you know the stems are quite small the florets quite small rather uh, the stems are getting a bit tougher but uh, it's still a worthwhile harvest and I've got nothing to go in this bed until the storage beetroot now so I'm in no rush really to take these plants out and the small new leaves like these are quite nice to harvest as well obviously the big old ones are not so great and I have got some spinach underplanted here as well and down there I've got some field beans under those so in the end all those tiny florets added up to a worthwhile harvest so now I'm going to pick some of the early peas and there's, you know there's not a huge number on at this time of year um, and the taste they're not quite as sweet as they will be in a few weeks time when they've had a bit more sun on them but uh, yeah it's still well, it's still gorgeous to uh, pick a few so early in the season and in the end they only got about seven or eight and uh, I'm eating them all fresh so uh, lovely and crispy but we do have plenty of pea shoots so I'm going to get on with those instead when you're picking the shoots you just want these tender tips lots of leaf not very much stalk and we don't most of the stuff that I'm harvesting today I'm harvesting into water but these I guess they don't need any clean up at all because they're beautiful um, clean harvested crop no slugs or snails or anything like that these are just going straight into their sealed containers pea shoots and these work well in salads stir fries soups all those sorts of things in terms of varieties i use oregon sugar pod because i find that peas that are grown for uh, a sweet pod 
also have really sweet leaves as well by comparison with uh, peas that are just grown for vigor so uh, and Oregon sugar pot are a fairly vigorous uh, plant as well so I don't think there's much of a compromise there except you do just pay fractionally more for the plants for the seeds rather so now I'm on to parsley and the parsley is going to seed now so we won't have new season parsley for a while there's some of our new season parsley um, and so we'll pick all of this and get it dried and that'll keep us going for a few weeks until the new season stuff arrives so there we go those are really crammed full so that should last a while so now onto the spinach and this is actually uh, i think it was february same spinach and so it's just finishing now it's just starting to go to flower so i'll just take this last pick off it all the big nice big outer leaves i'll leave the little rosettes in the center there not bother with those and i'll get this bed cleared tomorrow or the day after and I'm going to put little sprouts in there with leeks. So now I'm just harvesting what's left of the field beans. We don't have a huge number now, um, but uh, they're still nice enough. So now I'm on to the king of the brassica greens, the sprout leaves. And it's interesting that these, this particular variety that I'm growing here, which was new island improved i think or something long island improved um they've gone to seed unfortunately um now sprout leaves planted in early spring sown either in october or january don't normally go to seed but this particular variety seems to and uh, it's a bit of a shame because we absolutely love sprout leaves and as a result this bed is going to be harvested much earlier than normal normally it goes on until about July time but in this case it's coming out in June and the benefit of that is that I can get some carrots in so I'm not too, too concerned about that and of course I'm still getting a fantastic harvest of sprout leaves off it which is the, the primary objective after all so uh, yeah these are absolutely gorgeous and incredibly welcome at this time of year because we've only got a relatively small amount of new season kale available and so this will just fill the gap so hopefully all of our new season kale will be ready uh, within about two weeks time and our first early sowing is ready now and I'll show you that in a minute but for now we're really enjoying these sprout leaves and we have been for quite a long time so it's been a, a great harvest as I said just a, a little bit shorter harvest than we'd like so here's one of my beds of early kale these are all different types of Tuscan kales my favorite is this one it's uh, black magic and I like this one as well this is uh, called dazzling blue and so these are perfect for harvest now so I do try and keep on top of the harvest here because I've got a lot of beetroot interplanted in this bed so I want to make sure it's getting enough light and I've got a lot of mare's tail that needs to be picked out on a regular basis and you can't really see it when the plants are in full leaf so uh, let's get all that out but yeah I really want this beetroot to uh, be able to grow on this is my third succession of beetroot so it uh, should be ready in about two months so now I've finished harvesting all of my overwintered spring onions and so now I'm on to this new season crop and I've got to say I'm really looking forward to switching over because the uh, old season stuff, overwintered stuff, is getting a little bit tough and uh, these are just super tender. So these are great and they're in the pepper bed so I want to get them out of here 
as soon as possible. But just look at those beauties. And we've got some gorgeous hearted lettuces as well. So we've got loads of lettuce at home now, which we'll just harvest for the outer leaves. But uh, a few hearts really make a difference to the quality of the salad mixes. So there we go, that's the allotment harvest. Lots more to come from the garden now. So we're in the garden now. I've got green garlic here. So I've got one tub of this green garlic to harvest each week for the next three weeks. So I've got two there, another one there, and then my outdoor tomatoes are going in there. And I've got plenty of lettuce to harvest here. Another bed there. And this is next week's spinach. And these are the last of the spring cabbages. So I'll harvest one of those a week. And I've got plenty of perennial kale. So I should be harvesting quite a bit of that today. And then finally, I just want to get a few cucumbers picked. And we've got quite a nice selection on this plant, kind of all hidden away. And like so many things in gardening, you do need to keep on top of the harvest. Otherwise the uh, plant decides it doesn't need to make any more cucumbers. So here goes my next harvest of hopefully nice big baking potato sized charlottes and these are looking reasonable not huge so far but uh, certainly a good size for the time of year we might need a couple of them to make a good baking potato but uh, I'm certainly not disappointed. To be honest, I'm never really disappointed at this time of year. Anything we get is welcome. Yeah, you definitely can't complain about that harvest in uh, May from uh, one container. That is a pretty heavy yield for a second early. So here's a quick look at everything but the salad harvest. So we've got that parsley, those little onions, turnips, lovely baking potatoes, new potatoes, um, purple spout and broccoli. Debbie was particularly pleased that I managed to grow this little flake cake for her. Um, yeah, more, pur more purple spout and broccoli green garlic, carrots, spring onions, calabrese, mixed brassica leaves, quite a nice selection there, field bean tops, rhubarb, all sorts of mixed bits and pieces basically, so I think well actually maybe there's only just courgettes and asparagus, pea shoots and spinach and I think we've got probably about 10 containers that we gave away during the week to uh, allotment neighbours as well so pretty pleased with that well on the salads so I've just done the first harvest of these beds and there's a lot of waste when you do that. I don't think of it as waste, I'm just removing substandard leaves. And these leaves are old. These leaves have been growing now since March outside. They're tough, they're bitter, they've got holes in them. They're just not good eating quality. Uh, so I want rid of all of those. And what I want to be left with are the inner leaves and I'll let them grow on and I'll be harvesting those next week and it seems very harsh when you look at it but here's a bed from last week and you can see loads of really lush grow back and all of these leaves are now kind of perfect quality because all these leaves are young they're all about a month old they've been growing in much 
nicer conditions they're lifted up off the soil compost so there's less slugs in them um, less cleanup required and they're sweeter because they've been growing in less demanding conditions so yeah I'll just give this bed a little bit of a trim um, and really I, you know I say I'll come back to this bed and give it a really good harvest next week but right now I've actually got enough lettuce so I don't want to take too much off this one um, so yeah that's how to do lettuce I will do probably a better video showing you the details of this on another day but I'm tired now so there's today's salad mixes so these are Jenny's these are Debbie and mine and these are family and friends so uh, quite a nice selection really I do love these salad mixes and just get better and better as we head into summer <laughs> so I hope you like this quick video my name is Steve this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon